Uzi, one, one. Request takeoff. So let's see when they will be allowing us to move. Hopefully soon. Until then, the Falcon is actually not a bad plane to be watching. So far, I do not hear any confirmation that... Yeah, we can start moving. Let's roll, troll. We're heading straight ahead for the runway. Runway 09, standing by. down there. Not really the optimal takeoff pattern, I'll admit, but it gets the job done. So, we will be weapons safe while flying over Dubai. We don't want any accidents in the Dubai cityscape. Instead we will be heading more or less straight ahead and then we, once feet wet we will be starting to have a look on the Odin. We are also going to climb a bit to make sure we have a more optimal attack altitude for today's assignment. Once we are in a good enough altitude, I'll be trying to uh, find the target on the island of Abu Musa. I think you can see it in the background there. It's not the islands of the world. Currently, the islands of the world is one of the most hilariously failed projects ever. Only one of the islands have been sold, and basically the rest of the islands are... Yeah. I think their idea was basically that embassies or cultural centers would buy part of the islands on Islands of the World, but that never happened. So, we will be turning towards Abu Musa, and we will be doing our, once we are safely above the um, ocean, we will be trying our very best to uh, get some bombs on the target. Now, what I have discovered is that 
I'm most likely doing something wrong, but for me, bomb deployment is delayed. And uh, can actually require more or more than one press of the button. Uh, it doesn't seem to work when I'm holding it down, so it doesn't seem to be that kind of issue. But um, we are gonna, we have a couple of more bombs this time around, so we are going to investigate the matter. There we go, and we are gonna get this done. First of all, we are gonna put ourselves in air to ground mode. Then we are gonna go for the master arm. And then we are going to swap these things. Then we are going to uh, nose inventory. Profile seems good. Air to ground, CCIP. Yes, yeah, system seems ready. Uh, only strange thing here is that this seems to say we have only have three M82s when we actually do have six of them. Uh, no, that is actually incorrect. We have a mix here. There's been a loadout error again, it seems. With half of the bombs being MK82s and Half of the bombs being MK82 Snake, guys. So this could be very interesting, I think. This could be very interesting indeed. I mean, how do I manage to fu fuck up my loadout twice? This is truly the fail flight. Nope, just going to adjust my chair a wee bit. And we are gonna climb a bit more. The targets on the islands are Iranian F-14s. The State Department have decided that the Iranians are no, no longer supposed to have these. And uh, our job will be to try and drop bombs on them. Now there are some Iranian anti-aircraft on the islands, but not enough to actually cause the cause of any concern. So my mission today will be to drop my bombs, try to put as many planes out of commission as I can, and then return to any airfield of my choice in the Emirates. We have the island straight ahead. Not really the place I would park a number of F-14s, but hey, that's what I did because I created this mission. It's not a, the amount of missions actually included in the module so far are not many. In fact, the only training missions that are included are the takeoff and cold start missions. There are literally, the, literally no other missions available. Uh, there are some instant actions, of course, but um, basically you have to make your own fun where you find it. Okay, so the MK82s are ready. Profile on the nose. And hopefully we will be able to knock out at least one or two of the F-14s with our bombs. Adjusting our heading to compensate. We 
it would be interesting to try and do a blast bombing from this angle, but I think the blast radius and air radius would not agree, but we can try it. I mean, it's not like we have... going to turn it back in. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. When I'm holding the weapon release button down, this appears. And as you can see, no bomb has been deployed. So, there's basically only one O. Uh, we might actually have to wait for the... Yeah, I've, I understand what I was doing wrong now. Uh, I think there basically seems to be a line that I have to wait on. So, this bomb will be much more on the money. I wouldn't say it's a perfect delivery. But I would say that this is a far better delivery than we managed so far. So basically, what I have to do is I have to tr push the f uh, release button once. I'll have to make sure that the uh, line for the angle of attack triggers properly. And once it has, I can release the bomb. So basically, the plane limitations factor into this. But like anything, once you actually understand it, it sounds rather easy. So we are going to... Yes, we should be good for bomb delivery whenever at this point in time. At least if I done... If I, at least if I understand this correctly, I don't know if I have. Yeah, another bomb is away, pickle. Splash! That's one less F-14 to worry about. That is was a direct hit. Also, uh, plane trim is becoming an issue here. We're going to uh, adjust it a little bit. We're also going to speed up and uh, try and make sure that our next bomb will be equally on the money. Okay, so the cross cross is ticking down. Yes, I, I appear to be... I have to be on a specific angle of attack before the crossbar goes down and I can release the bomb. Altitude. There goes the last bomb. Well, not really the last bomb, but the last of the standard MK-82s. Close, but no cigar. Then again, the shrapnel from the bombs should have been sufficient. Okay, our system have uh, high drag tail uh, M82S. So basically, I'm putting my bombs on high drag here, making sure that uh, they can be employed properly. So if uh, if I'm not mistaken, this should be a, a very similar procedure. We just need to get on with it. And the crossbar and most likely also the angle of attack is a lot higher now. 
I don't seem to be able Altitude. to get the crossbar to be moving at all. Oh, now it's moving. I don't know if I can get the... Yeah, I can. Pull up. Bomb Pull away. Up. Altitude. Altitude. Well, that was a place we've already hit once, but at least it was a hit. I mean, it ended up at least somewhere close to where we wanted the thing. So, we are ready now to go about. come about and let's see if uh, how we're doing on this altitude altitude it looks like these bombs require a much steeper Pull up. angle of attack than Pull up. Pull up. standard mk82s and that went wide Fairly certain my delivery technique needs some work. <laughs> yeah, uh, Stuka 101. Uh, and that's the interesting thing, because I have the A10. But uh, I have absolutely... I've never actually learned it. The A10 is... I don't know why I haven't spent time with it, but it basically is... I have the Vigan, I love the Vigan to death, so if I'm gonna bomb something, then of course I'm gonna pick the Vigan. I would say that every other module I own is tool towards air combat more than ground attack. So we're gonna try a little bit more. We're gonna try our last bomb here, and then it's time to head back to Dubai. Altitude. Altitude. I think we're gonna have to abort this run. Pull up. Pull up. No. Nope. We'll just Pull throw up. it away and head back to Dubai. But that's not going to be a hit. At least not a good one. But at least the shrapnel should have neutralized the uh, F-14s for the moment. And uh, hopefully the Iranians will realize that their vaunted high-end planes from the late 70s are more vulnerable here so we are gonna be heading back and we've learned some really nice lessons about deploying bombs in the process so i would say it can only get better from here and yes this is me basically just pressing the emergency jets and stores Oh, look, that, that is actually a hook. Nice. We'll have to reset the trim because I retrimmed the aircraft while we had uh, a somewhat uneven bomb load. But we will now be returning to base and I will already start slowing the aircraft down for a landing. My landings are always, without any sort of exception, uh, too fast. The only question is if... Yeah, sorry, I got a little bit distracted here. Uh, the only question in my landings is if the plane is in a mood to handle a hot landing. Uh, but in general, my landings are almost always uh, too fast. So now I'm going to be trying to... Uh, not do a landing like that. In the... I would also say that it's probably a good thing that I'm keeping my fuel tanks, because one thing I realized was that when I tried to land the F5 on a carrier, I realized that fuel tanks are actually pretty nice. Uh, when it comes to creating inefficient drag 
to slow your airplane down. I think we're going to set this bird down at Dubai International. And basically just get some free food from the restaurant. We're also going to make sure to lose some altitude. And this time I'm going to set her down right. Yeah, I'm looking at the manual now, and the, the bomb fall line and is the thing that I was waiting for. And the thing was that I understood the concept of it, but I didn't understand the fact that my bombs would not be able to be dropped until it had processed. So, like I said, you learn something every day, even doing a fail flight. Uh, what you see on the HUD straight ahead should actually be one of my navigation beacons. I put up a navigation system for this flight, but since I know the Persian Gulf map fairly well, at least this side of Dubai, um, I would say that um, I didn't need it. I know a decent air route to and from. Now, had this been a scripted scenario mission, I would most likely follow it, because, you know, scenario missions. But just when it comes to a standard flying and learning, uh, I don't really see the need for it. Uh, so we're going to race Dubai International. Uzi, one, one, inbound. They are currently neutral. We'll see if they will have us. I think Dubai International want us to come in from the other way. Or not? No, they... We, we're Altitude. good. Altitude. They want us to come runway 20. What's that? What's that 30? We'll just simply have to look as we get closer. And yes, I have my air brakes ex extended. Nothing is going to prevent me from losing the speed I need to lose. We'll also need to check the trim a little bit more. Now, the first thing, the first time I flew the Hornet, I felt the Hornet was the best thing since sliced bread. And uh, I decided that, hey, I'm going to be trying a landing here. The landing is going to be fine. It's going to be a great landing. Make landings great again. And then I crashed my Hornet into a palm tree on landing. Because while my landings are usually too hot, apparently there is such a thing as gliding yourself straight into the fucking ground. As this for a passenger liner. Also, while the some F-16s have a braking chute, this one does not. I should mention that, because during my first landing, uh, it became a touch and go, because I expected to pull a brake chute, and uh, there wasn't any to pull. 
the United States Air Force F-16s does not have a break shoot. I'm gonna get rid of the air brakes now because right now I think our speed is um, sufficient for the task ahead of us. Hello, Dubai! Prep the bazaar, I'm coming for dinner. Or lunch. Or whatever. Air brakes are extended again. Altitude. Altitude. A little short, but... Uh... Just see if we could get this bird to stop in time. I would actually think so. I think this was a well not a perfect landing, at least at least a decent one. We'll just have to find a Yeah, those are basically the marks from my brakes here. But I mean, we landed in what can pretty much be said to be one piece, so... And even on the right runway, this is the runway 30. Closing the air brakes. Nice. No! Stop tipping over, you absolute horrid airplane! Stop, at least the electronics pod took the hit of it. Am I right? So let's uh, taxi to one of the terminals. But yeah, that, that was kind of horrifying to see the electronics pod basically just scraping the ground because I took that turn a little bit too loose and fast. So yeah, let's just r roll the bird back to where it belongs on the flight line. I think I can see a couple of palm trees over there. I think I'm gonna go and pay them a visit Rather on the cargo. So let's roll straight ahead and uh, stop at the end of this parking way. Since our F-16 no longer has any ordnance, I think this should be just fine. At least that is what I am hoping for. And we are pretty much pretty much clear here. So let's pop the auto shutdown. 
and shut down this plane, and then we'll have someone else come and fetch it for us later. Right now, I'm just gonna lean back and be happy that the airplane is somewhat in... <laughs> yeah, we, tur we turned off the avionics, and then we basically got uh, riddled with static from the radio. So the throttle is turning off, and we should be good. Hopefully the canopy, yeah, here we go with the canopy. And we are getting some nice, nice fresh air. Well, our mission wasn't a complete success, but I'd say we learned something from it at the very least. And I can't really say that's a bad thing. So, that was it for right now. I need to pop over for lunch and another review item. So, I will not be flying the Viper for... <laughs> yes, uh, to be honest, I if I could choose between pre-ordering the Viper and the JF-17, I would actually have pre-ordered the JF-17. But... Uh, the month's salary had arrived, and I felt that, hey, if I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy both of them either way, I might as well get the Viper. Then the Viper released a lot earlier than I anticipated, and I have to say, I think the Viper is... Um, I would actually say that the Viper might actually have been released a little bit too early. Uh, we can actually see if this airbase can reload us. I don't think they can. Uh, but we're going to remove every single pylon here. Removing the pylon gives a very sleek airframe. And is some, something that's very fun to do. Uh, as you can see, there's no livery. So, yeah, you basically got me talking a little bit more about... Oh, God, now they're just popping in more people. I'm going to have to take off again, ain't I? Well, I can actually I can actually delay the lunch for this, but right now this is just being insane right now. Just because I landed, and mind you that none of you people were here when I actually did land the plane. God damn it! I land the plane and there's nobody watching. So we'll see if this base can reload us. I'm not sure they can. I don't think they can. Uh, but yeah, this is the tail end of the flight, and if they can't reload us, then I'm not going to be flying anymore, so really sorry about that, guys. Yeah, I think yeah, this civilian airport does not have sidewinders and do not want to pull fuel tanks off an airplane, so sorry, people. Uh, this has been, I basically just felt that I would do a uh, short fly, uh, fly around. Trying out the bombs, trying out uh, some uh, takeoff and landing procedures. But uh, right now, we're just going to stay on the ground for the moment. So take care, people. <laughs> yeah, I would act not only East style, but also, I mean, I'm a, I'm a Swede at heart. So I would really love to see stuff like the J-45 Draken or the A-32 Lansen or stuff like that. Uh, I'm more at home in the Cold War era of airplanes than I am with uh, the newer stuff. But I can also see why people would pick the newer stuff in regards to um, stuff they want to fly. I mean, the Draken would be a perfect plane for DCS. I mean, it's unique. With a very punishing flight style, I know, because there is a simulator in Sweden where you can sit in an actual Draken cockpit. And uh, they have replicated, I mean, everything. So uh, that was the first time I actually had a cockpit experience. I'm not really sure it's comparable to the uh, MiG-21. And r in regards to the missiles, it could carry six uh, Sidewinders in the Johan version. 
So, uh, I'm not sure that would be an issue. But I wouldn't want the Sidewinders. I would want the Raket, Jakt Raket Kapsel M59. Uh, which is basically a rocket pod that is designed to work against aircraft. And obviously it will only work against bombers. But imagine flying up against, behind a bomber and unleashing four rocket pods worth of rockets straight into the tail of that bomber. That is something I could write a campaign about. Just flying over Georgia in a Draken, shooting down Ru large Russian bombers while another Swedish aircraft basically covers the six. Well, it's been nice to talk to you, Berat, uh, and I hope we can do that. <laughs> yeah, basically the Draken is more prone to superstall in low speeds. And I've experienced this because in the simulator I mentioned, I during the landing, I actually during the second landing, I accidentally managed to uh, pull the brake chute on approach, and you do not want to do that with Drake, and it basically fell like a fucking brick. Take care, and I am off for lunch.